shaft drive diesels, long range, full keel and classic good looks. <laughs> If you've seen my previous video on the Duchy 35 in England, she's a beauty, but she's full of a lot of shiny timber, which is not particularly practical for our market. So in this video, we're going to focus on the first Duchy 35 in Australia and all the features that this particular owner has fitted for this to this boat, which are much more suitable for our climate. So welcome to Quarantine Bay, guys. Um, what you see behind me is actually where they used to drop off all the diseased people off ships coming and arriving from England. I've even got a family story. Um, you know, many generations ago, some uh, relatives of mine arrived here on a highly diseased ship and they got the people off, stuck them in the quarantine station and they set the ship on fire right out there and burnt it. Uh, to the waterline and sunk it. It was so full of, full of germs. So there you go, a little bit of history. Um, but this is a beautiful place you could come to on a boat like this. And this particular duchy has been equipped to suit Sydney Harbour day boating and cruising further afield for a couple perfectly, in my opinion. We have Seakeeper Gyro, we have the generator, we have a Fisher Panda, Fisher Panda generator. It is on right now. Can you hear it? So this is gonna be something I'm gonna point out in a little bit more uh, details in a sec. But this boat, she's stable, she's quiet, and she's super comfortable through the waves. What looks like timber is actually not timber. So everything you're looking at here, I didn't even know this was possible. Come in and have a closer look, Sam. So look at these curves and the design of what looks like timber. This is not timber. This is Flexi Teak. It's been custom done right the way across the decks here. It, it looks great and it looks, I, I thought it was timber, but it's not. So for your maintenance side, for the sun that we have in this country, you don't have to worry. I just think that is awesome. Um, the, the start up and pack down process on this boat is quite simple. There's just one cover which uh, attaches to the trailing edge of the rooftop and comes down and goes over this whole cockpit area. So you don't have to cover the seats individually. Um, once that's removed, you, you're ready to rock and roll for the day. So super convenient, much, much better for our climate. And we have this sea keeper on right now. We do have waves rolling in. There is some swell. If you're interested in how this boat drives in that swell, we have just done that. Quite a detailed video um, driving it right up to full speed and taking the waves on all three points. That's gonna be separate to this and I'll link to that at the end of this video. Pricing's in the description below, by the way. I know a lot of you ask me that quite regularly. So come out the back of the boat. Dan Jones is my name, g'day. If we haven't met before, thanks for coming, thanks for joining. You're watching Dan's Boat Life. Um, just move that Aussie flag out of the way, but this is our fixed transom. Just want to pay attention to this rubber all the way around and that goes forward and i'll just cut some drone shots of that just to give you a little bit of protection at the dock because she's a beautiful blue hull and we don't really want to scratch that if we can avoid it we've got some storage in the opening door just here and the stainless um, which you'll see on both sides but um, look at the cleats just they're beautiful beautifully done really really nice work the the name on the back, Kookaburra, I love it, very Aussie, has been done in stainless steel and it has some courtesy lights as you enter. And also on the starboard side, we actually have the hot and cold swim shower that just pulls out of here and it's a twist operator to, uh, to make that work. But just look at these, uh, you know, I know I've pointed out in the previous video, look at the stainless steel, everything's done in house. Um, it's actually, these boats are made in England, in Falmouth, at least I think it's Falmouth because all the towns are so close together. They've got different names and I get confused in England because, because I'm used to there being more space or some outback in between the towns. And I was telling the guys before, when I first traveled to London, I got a bus to Brighton and I thought I was still in London because London, I did, London didn't end, I was people everywhere. And leave a comment in the description below, but do you, does that happen to you? I just got totally thrown. Anyway, whatever. So we do have a particular custom layout of this boat which is also more suitable perhaps for your Sydney day boat scene. And I'll go through that 
in more detail in a second, but we're going for the full flow through. So we don't have all the highly polished timbered doors just here. We have the uh, powder coated black aluminium ones instead, and they're concertinaing open to give us maximum flow through. And then we have multifunctional furniture to allow everyone to sit around here. But there's more. So underneath these seats, underneath me here, there, and there and there is actually storage. Inside uh, these storage lockers, we have some bags, and then there is little lunch tables which slot in, and I'm gonna cut to those so you can see. So we can actually sit at tables here and here. And then underneath the deck hatch where I'm standing, this whole thing hinges up to port on gas struts, and the Fisher Panda gen set is centrally mounted aft and it's also insulated. So the, the insulation of the hatch is about that thick and then the gen set is in its own insulation as well. The other thing that you'll find when you're in this storage space just here, access to the steering gear, we have an autopilot as well, so that's um, starboard aft and all the batteries, main battery switches are all operated from inside here. Also breakers for things like your, um, uh, your sea keeper and then your electronic control system. What do we call it? C bus? Empire bus. Empire bus. It's quite interesting. I'm learning as much as I can, but I'm, I'm going to demonstrate what I what I know uh, as we make our way through. So we've got a manual bilge pump there. We've got some speakers just there. We've got courtesy lights, um, f both facing forward here. And then I'm standing over the engine hatches. So they will open like this and like this. And this particular boat has the upgraded Yanma, so they are a V8 and a 350 horsepower on a straight shaft. And again, if you want to see how it drives, she's plenty, plenty powerful, which is, does over 30 knots. And the torques, uh, the the props are quite torquey, so you can do, um, you know, some pretty good maneuverability, moving from side to side when you need. Making your way forward is done much better on the starboard side because this is the way to do it. If you you can go port, but you'd really need to have either long legs or little, be a little bit uh, limber to throw a leg over and make your way up port side with ease. But you do have, just point the camera over here, Sam, because you do have good access all the way aft and forward. Can you see that? And we're gonna go up there in a sec. Now, the other thing worth pointing out, tying fenders, see that guys? That's actually where you would secure a fender and you've got a few of them dotted around the boat just to keep it looking good. And this track here is to do with the cover. So that's, there's no gap. So I mentioned the cover before, it zips on here and then it goes bolt ropes in these tracks and then protect, you know, completely protects everything. Now, next thing, suitable for Australia, this mess sunshade and see the carbon fiber poles just here suit like they weigh nothing they were probably grams not kilos so you anyone can operate them they just store again below here this has its own bag we drove at full speed with this up it doesn't flap around it's totally fine i was questioning that but at the beginning of the day thinking we'd need to take it off not necessary totally fine leave it up all day if you wish so i think i've covered everything there a couple of down lights here just pay attention to the detail that we see in the roof here that's very nice what you'd expect of this sort of style then when we enter enter the, the the saloon we've got quite a bit going on here so we can concertina this side closed if it was cold and you just wanted to enter and exit through here that's an option we've got the seat facing aft so just imagine a whole big group of your friends all enjoying this space that's what that's intended for particularly with this Sea Keeper on, it's fantastic. It's got inherent stability already because it's got a low center of gravity, you've got a keel, but adding that Sea Keeper really does change the game. So now you can bring the party indoors and do a meal inside if you need. And underneath me, I've actually got a drawer just below with some beautiful custom tools, which is an option because uh, it's all done by the guys. Cockwells, am I saying that right? Yeah. So they, they don't just build duchy. They actually also make, I think it was their original business, uh, beautiful custom super yacht tenders. So imagine like the, the billionaire guys who have these mega yachts and how they have these gorgeous, like absolutely, I've been there, so this is why I'm trying to explain it to you. Um, 
stunning tenders where every little detail has to be thought about. The reason why I didn't film it is because they sign non-disclosures with these guys. They're not allowed to uh, publicize what they're making for these, these people. But I did get to see it with my own eyes. And it's the level of craftsmanship and quality going on with all these young English guys and girls doing their thing. It's quite impressive. And so the same mob are building these boats is, is what I'm trying to explain. So storage under here, leather seats. But this layout is another one of the Australian sort of favorites because this particular owner uh, had a real think about how he's gonna use his boat and how him and his wife would get the most enjoyment out of this thing. So yes, you can put a galley up, This that's possible. Uh, and I think we had that on the last boat, galley up and you'd have a fixed seat, helm seat just here facing forward. But if you're like most Sydney people and you do a lot of day boating and then occasional overnighting and coastal trips, are your friends really gonna stay the night with you? Do you really need that second cabin or would it be better as storage? So this particular owner had a good hard think about that and realized, you know what? We're gonna, our friends are gonna benefit more from having this space and having the galley down because 99% of the time we're gonna be doing this. So actually, can you, you should almost come back here, Sam, and look back so everyone can get it into perspective. So look at all this seating. You can have the whole party around here. I'll just sit down. How many people, like you could put eight people very comfortably and more if you needed to and with kids. And then you can move that whole group out here with a couple of director's chairs and the tables in, in place. It's just giving you the option because we, we do have air conditioning and I'm gonna show the outlets in a second. So. It's just really, really clever. Like we're only in 35 foot of boat, but we're getting so much done. So I got a fridge just here, um, more fridges. Underneath me just here, there's actually a big suction cup and it lifts up a very solid, well insulated hatch. Um, and that gives you access to the front of the motors and the sea keeper, which is center line mounted. And then we have the hot water insulated cylindrical um, tank on the starboard side. I forgot to mention the water tanks, they are aft, 300 litres a side, they're hard plastic and they're accessible from that aft uh, hatch that we pointed out before. So that's what's going on there. Your primary engine access here, forward engine access here. Um, this table can drop down. There are cushions that'll go in place and turn this into a bed. So on the one time in 10 years that you have some friends that you know wanna stay the night or they have too many wines and they can't drive home, they can sleep here. But it's, you know, it's, I think that's sensible thinking. So, but now we've got both of these seats facing aft, but we can do this, boom, boom. So how good's that? Co plenty comfortable, um, lots of leg room for tall people. Um, you know, the owner is six foot three and he reckons that's probably about the limit um, height wise for comfort. There was a little bit of space above his head, but knocking your head on the doorway for people six foot three and over would be a consideration. So just bear that in mind. This window goes up and down, it's electric. Um, so you actually just press a button. I haven't got it turned on. Um, so this will go up and down electrically. I think that's important, even though this is air conditioned and we've got the design of the roof has some overhangs that'll knock out the hot midday sun. I like having that as an option. Got some reading lights here and here proper chart table storage like you would expect on a sailing yacht or many many of you are going to be used to knick-knack storage here and here all of this timber it's oak um so they probably they probably have their own forest some guy called barry who like goes and selects the selects the trees individually for you i could just imagine some english bloke with a chisel and a pencil in his ear or doing it all very well but that's that's um, I'm making it up, but I can just imagine that. So um, that's all very cool. Now, underneath here are more storage, but one of them, here we go. Look at that for details, guys. So that's all felt, beautiful. Everything's nicely arranged. Isn't that lovely? And pay attention to the dovetail joins just here. It's all good stuff. So there you go. Now, underneath me just here is if you had the second, the optional second cabin, it would be underneath us, but it's actually a huge storage 
area. So I'm actually just gonna lift that up now. And just get the camera in there, Sam. See how big that is, guys? So you've got oodles of space for your cushions, bags, bits and pieces. You know, if you were doing, doing a long trip, if you're going to Hamilton Island, for example, you know, booze is expensive there. So I would buy it in Sydney and store it in here for the trip. So just an idea. Um, so we've got an air conditioning outlet just next to the skipper, just here. We have, uh, that's an inlet just there, but we also have air con above the windows. Next thing, these windows are actually heated glass. So in winter time, when you have the condensation, you just press a button and you can get rid of it. Isn't that cool? Um, I think one of the main advantages that many of you are gonna be sort of looking for in a style of boat like this is a helm door. It really is a true advantage. If you're coming from sailing and you haven't done motorboating before and you're just getting into a style like this, you, your life will be better with a helm door because just picture all of your friends congregating in this part of the boat and you're going forward to pick up a mooring like we have today or you wanna operate the anchor or just do something on the bow, um, you're not having to weave your way in between all those people. And when seconds matter, it's just nicer to be able to get straight to the decks, which you can on a setup like this. So I love that. Um, the steering wheel is beautiful. That's, this must be pointed out because it is a little work of art, this one. That's very, very nice. And all the little touches as we make our way around the boat is something that I know you're gonna appreciate and it's not something that you see on, on many boats which are more of a mass market production style. Um, so electronic throttles, power on, start stop for the Yanmars, Yanmar digital diagnostics for both motors, we can get fuel flow through those, bow thruster control, trim tab control, spotlight, AC, dual screens, and we've got the chart plotter on the starboard screen, um, compass, beautifully mounted on some timber just there on some oak but that whiz bang electronic system that i was talking about is currently up on this screen here it actually allows you to monitor and control all the electronics on your boat so you can switch the lights on you can do everything from the gen set to the ac to the lights you can see what uh, your you rudder, rudder angle indicator, your gauge levels, they're all visible through here. But what it will also allow you to do, because there's actually some mobile phone connectivity to this. So if you are on your way down to the boat and you live, say, half an hour away and it's a hot day, you can fire up the Jenny and stick on the AC. So the cabin's going to be at your temperature before you arrive. It even has functionality within the system if it notices the power level dropping below a certain voltage, so say you've had a, I know, electrical storm and the, the, the shore power's gone out, it will actually sense that, fire up the Jenny and recharge your battery. So that's, that's super handy uh, for the busy people. And I also remember when I was in Falmouth visiting the factory with, the, with Sam last year, they actually can monitor every boat in the Dutchy fleet. They had a, a big set of screens up there and if anyone was having uh, problems with their boat or any, any alarms were showing up, it actually it comes up back at home base. So they're ringing you before you know you have a problem. So go figure, that's kind of cool. Um, anyway, uh, three-piece windscreen. We'll get out the front there in a second and have a look because I want to go downstairs first. So this is, you know, it's compromise for some and a benefit for others. I think for the Aussies, this is going to be a benefit. We've got the galley down. And if you went for the two cabin, this would actually be access to the second cabin because we would have shower and loo separate. But if you're gonna be using it like most Sydney Harbour day boaters or Melbourne or wherever you are um, around the country, you probably will value more of that open through flow social space that we've just seen. What you're gonna sacrifice is you're not gonna have a separate shower. So get in there and have a look. So you'll have what is quite a large toilet basin wet area with the opening window and you're just standing on those teak slats there. I assume that's teak for the shower, um, which is fine. And I'll just get in there for perspective. You know, I've still got that much space above my head standing on this grate here and there's 
plenty of arm room to move around. So it is a proper cubicle, but the loo's gonna get wet. So just, you decide whether that suits you or not. Bit of storage in here, extractor fan, got the window, she's all good stuff. Um, the other thing I just wanna point out, <laughs> this is magnetized. So when you close, boom, boom. did you see that? Cool, details. Um, so Sam, you just go here and just point back into the galley. So she's a neat galley, but really, what are you gonna do? You're probably gonna heat up food. You, you know, you got your two burner just there, you got your sink just here, you got your second fridge just there, storage underneath. I'll just point out one cool thing. This is the sort of theme, once again, guys, and that's all custom Dutchy good stuff. That's not plastic, <laughs> but isn't that lovely? And she's a she's a hull style that is so forgiving. None of this is going to rattle around, but she's also been designed properly that they can't. Got the microwave in there, a little bit of storage behind me here. You do also have this opening if you're making some smells when you're cooking. You've got some down lights just here. That looks like an extractor fan. So I would say that button there turns that on and off. So come forward. So we had the two steps, actually one of them, I better point this out before we go forward. This is the bin, quite a deep bin. That pulls out, you can just put a bin bag on that. And then you've got these stainless steel grips, which are both elegant but quite functional. They do work on your boat shoes or your bare feet, courtesy of lights just there. Okay, so now let's go forward. And it's a good use of limited space because you know, we are now getting to the limits of our 35 feet in total. So if we had one door, we would, um, we would stop access to port or starboard because the door's gonna be double this length. So they've just done the double door is, is what I'm trying to point out and allows me to get in and go to either side. So I'll go starboard and just come and have a look. And you have this on both sides. We have these storage bins. See that on Corian. So just get in there. You can also see the construction of the hull. Um, so all very nicely done. And then we have these storage lockers all the way forward. I've got AC. I've got two opening um, little port lights on either side if you want natural ventilation. And I have an aft facing opening escape hatch and for ventilation. This is gonna op open and get us into the anchor locker. Got some reading lights. You're gonna be need, you need to lie down in bed if you're reading. You won't sit up too well because of the roof design just here, but that's neither here nor there. And then you've got a little bit of storage for knickknacks just there. And we do also have cupboards because there's a, there's a void in here. So this is, this is deep storage in here accessible via two doors. We have a hanging locker. Excuse my um, equipment bag on the port side, but you might as well have a look there, Sam. And so that's a hanging locker just there. See how it lights up the little thingamajiggy? That's cool. But the final thing, so if you just go back and look forward, Sam, there's actually a little, if I pull this, the whole bed goes up on gas struts. So you can do that one hand and there's deep storage in here, access to the bath thruster as well, but then you can also see your other drawers here and here, beautiful dovetail joinery and nicely done. So that's good, sensible usage of space that um, I like to see in any boat really. So let's go forward and have a look at the bow. So the details guys, stainless steel logo there, navigation lights, beautifully done making your way forward just for safety. See the design of the roof here? So this is a really easy grab hold. We have a grab hold up here, so you've got that. But I just wanted to point that out if you didn't notice. Also the fair lead midships through here and you can secure a springer forward and aft, nice and easy. Waist out, but all of you are gonna to wanna to know about the door, how does it work? You just have one of these on the inside and this one on the outside, boom, boom. So you've got stainless steel rails here and up here, like a, a, a guiding rail, so to speak, and that's how it works. Pretty easy, locking point forward, seems to work nice and simple. There's another one of those fender, um, uh, you know, attachment points. But as soon as you go forward and you lose your grab handle here, you gain a grab handle here. So boom, just think about that. Look at the way, just show them the waves, Sam. So, and now come back, see how stable we are? We have the sea keeper on. If you have someone who is not happy on rocky boats, this is something to focus on. 
in, you know, in addition to the Sea Keeper. So it really is cool. One, two, three windscreen wipers, three piece um, tough and glass windshield heated, as I mentioned. Let's just focus on the roof. Come up here and have a look back. So notice how much space we, we have. You, you could get up and walk around on this, but I'm also thinking people who want to store water toys. So this is the area where you're probably going to do that. If you have those floaty matty things or you know um, sup boards or any of that sort of stuff, it's going to go pretty well. You have uh, somewhere to secure it um, and it's just a great place to put it. So you've got your VHF aerial aft, you've got your Raymarine center line mounted, very stylish mast there with the all round white light. The horns, we've got our spotlight, another one. It's quite bougie, classic, fits the style. And then check this out. These cushions store below in that midship's um, locker, the storage locker that I pointed out before, but this is what you do on a boat like this, middle of summer. Come and hang out up here. You need some color matched big cushions. Go and find something that looks cool with the boat. Make sure it fits all the other styling that you do on the inside, but that's gonna be really nice. I'm imagining one of those big, soft, round beach towels with the tassels that come out on the end. That would look so cool up here. You do a stripey number or something like that. Anyway, you do you. So coming forward, we get another good look at this Flexi Teak, which has just been done so well. You know, I'm used to Flexi Teak. We've all seen Flexi Teak before on um, decks like this, but it's just the cap rails and the thick areas like this that they've done. Look at this, Sam, look at that. It looks like timber, but it's not. It's great for Australia, love it. So dual uh, bow roller. So we have the anchor on the, um, on the starboard side, the stainless steel anchor to gow chain after the swivel. And then you can just put your mooring line to this cleat. Can you see that just there? Big chunky, one big awesome piece of stainless. So I pointed out the little door down below in the cabin. That's how you access the anchor locker, not from here. So that's how it's done. It's on a gas strut. All really, really well done. So I think, I think that covers everything, guys. Um, so who is this boat right for? It's, it's many people um, is my thought process on this. It's somebody who definitely has come out of a sailing lifestyle will appreciate this. If you're conscious of the amount of fuel you burn um, for whatever reason, uh, this is gonna be lower on the fuel consumption side of things compared to many boats that you see on my channel. So if that's important to you, um, it's just gonna be one of those things that you can achieve on a boat like this. And you can get some pretty decent range. If you slow this boat down um, to sailing yacht speeds, you get over a thousand nautical miles with these um, you know, 1,100 litre tanks. And even with the standard tanks, which is like half of that 600 odd litres, you could still get a pretty decent range at a sailing yacht speed. Obviously, we can do 30 knots on this if we choose. Um, who's it not gonna suit? Well, somebody who doesn't like this style. <laughs> it's as simple as that. If this is not your style, if you're more modern and racy, go and buy an azimut or whatever, you know, modern European style that suits you. It's pretty clear, you know, this is aiming at that demographic of person who loves a classic timeless boat, which is never gonna go out of fashion. And I think the fact that we have achieved these Australian options, you know, having the fake teak, um, having the flow through out the back there, which really works for our lifestyle, I reckon makes this boat epic for anyone in Australia or New Zealand for that matter too. So we're going for a drive. If you really want to come along, click on the link coming up on the screen right now. You're invited, you are more than welcome. Um, and I want to prove to you how well this thing goes through waves because we do have waves out there today. So you're going to see what it's all about and see whether this is a style of boat that suits your boat life. Anyway, subscribe, support the Patreon, give us a like, share with your mates, all that good stuff. My name's Dan Jones. You've been watching Dan's Boat Life. Thank you. See you on the next one.